I want to tell you a story that you probably won't hear from the national news media, but it's one that you need to know. It involves uh, BLM, the politics around it, the pandering to the vicious mob that's going on across the country. I, mean, I know we have a, a fantastic radio station in KFAB, Omaha, Nebraska, and this is a story that takes place in Omaha. And it could happen anywhere in the country. It is happening all over the country. We've seen something somewhat similar, though nobody was killed in St. Louis when a person tried to stand up, or a husband and wife uh, tried to stand up for their safety, the security of their homes, and were lawful gun owners. All of a sudden, the state turned on them because there are people who have the power of the state that they're supposed to use to protect the law abiding that would prefer to be on the side of the vengeful, rageful, spittle-mouth, profane, crazy mob. Right? That's what we see happening. The the abdication of responsibility to enforce the law irrespective of what the political needs of any one person, one politician may be in the moment, and the removal of Second Amendment self-defense rights that comes along with it. And uh, this is this cannot be allowed to stand. This is appalling. So here's what happened. Uh, Last week, a grand jury in Omaha, Nebraska, indicted a white bar owner named Jake Gardner. Who shot a black man during protests for, quote, this is according to NPR, racial justice, end quote, in May. So there's video of this. and I watched the video. There is a disagreement outside this guy's bar. There's a mob outside screaming their usual threats. And somebody says this guy, Jake Gardner, the white guy here, has a gun. And 22-year-old James Skurlock, who is black, uh, attacked him. Caused an altercation. Put hands on him. You know, uh, try to wrestle him to the ground. And Gardner shot Skurlock. Now, I I don't know how much more straightforward this stuff can be. If somebody has a firearm and you know they have a firearm, even if they don't, but especially if you know someone has a gun and then your decision is I'm going to try to attack this person physically. They're going to be thinking, one, I don't want to get attacked. And two, if they knock me out or they just manage to get my firearm, I'm dead. So if you attack a person with a gun without cause and that person shoots you, that is self-defense. That is morally justified and legally justified. This is a this is a a a bedrock principle. I mean, this is a foundational in our society. You, you know, your right to defend yourself is not subject to should not be subject to the whims of politicians who have to appeal to a crowd, a mob of crybabies. Right? That's not the way this is supposed to work. So initially. They reviewed the video footage, this video outside the bar, and the Douglas County District Attorney Don Klein said that this was self-defense and released Gardner from custody. So the district attorney said, yeah, I saw the video, guys. This is self-defense, which it clearly, it clearly is. All right. Ah, but you see... Jake Gardner is a, I believe, a former Marine and a white Trump supporter. And James Skurlock is a black BLM supporter. And the mob does not accept this as an outcome. They do not accept this. So they continue to protest, to organize, to create political pressure. And then the DA, Don Klein, uh, appointed a special prosecutor to review the case. This guy brought in, this is the Pontius pilot move, right? All right, I'm just going to hand it to somebody else. In that case, hand it to the crowd that called for Barabbas, right? This, this is what you see happening here. What a coward. And hat tip Ann Coulter for raising this story to national prominence by tweeting out about it yesterday. But w- what a coward um, y- you see from this guy Klein putting this in the hands of a special prosecutor, then put it before a grand jury. The the special prosecutor did. Frederick Franklin. They charged Gardner with four counts, manslaughter, attempted first-degree assault, terroristic threats, 
and use of a firearm in connection with a felony. He faced, he faced 95 years in prison for this. 95 years. It's a very long time. Now, if he had pleaded, he might have gotten. But this guy, you know, if he pleaded, maybe it would have been, a dramatic, it would have been much less. But here's the problem with pleading. He didn't do anything wrong. All right. I watched the video. I read the accounts, the eyewitness accounts. BLM protesters all, all, you know, flush with their power, all excited that people have to quake in fear at the very thought of them marching outside their property. We want justice. You know. Uh, these, these BLM protesters, I swear, you know, what they should want is uh, some discipline. Uh, a good paying job and to read a book. But instead, what they want is to threaten people and to form mobs outside their businesses and burn them down and do all these things. Uh, so th- this is a, a clear cut case of self-defense on video. And you would think that we could all be on the same page about how self-defense is a natural law, right? That this is this is is critical to our understanding of of living in a, in a civilized society that you're allowed to defend yourself. And uh, James, James Scurlock, look, James Scurlock uh, was shot and that was justified. It was justified. What he did, it's on video, you can see it. If someone did that to me, I would shoot them too. And that was what the initial district attorney, whose only job is to determine whether there's guilt, whether there's a need to bring a case, that was the initial district attorney finding here that there should not be any, any criminal charges. And then the politics turned and then it became untenable. You see, the mob wanted a scalp. The mob wanted a scalp. You have a white Trump supporter shoots a black BLM supporter. Not allowed. Not allowed. Mob can't let that fly. So they demand what they call justice. What they really want is. Is mob justice, which is no justice at all. It's just whatever the angry people making the most noise, making the most threats on the street want at any given moment. That's not justice. Well, tragically, Jake Gardner uh, was found over the weekend about 20 miles from Portland, Oregon, dead. He killed himself because he knew that he could not trust the state. He knew that he could not trust his own government in Nebraska. They, They could not trust that the system would do what was right because there's so much cowardice out there right now. People are just so afraid, not only of being called racist, they're afraid of not being liked by the people that run around calling everybody racist. You know, the mob formed outside Klein's home in in Omaha. They went right for him, and they pressured him, and he gave in. He caved. There's no need to assign a special prosecutor to review this. He just wanted to hand it to somebody else who wanted to help get the scalp here. Maybe, uh, you know, help his political aspirations down the line. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. You know, it's, and it's, it's just tragic. It's wrong. <sighs> Jake Gardner's life mattered. And the government let him down. The state of Nebraska let him down. And this is the country that we live in now where the mob is allowed to threaten you and even physically attack you. And if you have a problem with that, if you take any action to defend your, never mind expecting that the police will intervene. Never mind expecting that the state itself will do what is necessary to protect you and your family and your property. No. If you take that into your own hands, which is your God-given right, or right not even given by the state, and your own government will turn on you. These are dark days, friends. This is something I'm not sure I ever, I ever thought we'd, we'd have to go through as a country. Self-defense not allowed. You know, you see the situation in Kenosha, Wisconsin, uh, where that young man, Rittenhouse, now I, I've said it and I stand behind it. I wish he hadn't showed up at that protest. He, he was in over his head, but doesn't change anything about him defending himself. Guy had a gun in his hand and attacked him. If you attack me with a gun in my hand, I'm going to shoot that person. I'm not going to feel bad. I'm not going to lose a night's sleep. I'm not going to feel bad about it either. You attack somebody with a gun and you get shot, that's on you. This is very basic. This is very straightforward. But in this country right now, you are told that you better 
obey the demands of the mob. You better live in fear. You better bend the knee. You know, I saw over the weekend more video of of these roadblocks like insurgents do in countries. They set up these roadblocks and they make people on video hold their fist up and say black lives matter. Can you imagine if MAGA hat wearing Trump supporters were setting up roadblocks and that demanding people either bend the knee or hold up a fist and say the prescribed slogan of their political movement? Can, can you imagine what the response would be? And Democrats wouldn't just call for the National Guard. They'd want, you know, Nancy Pelosi would be on the floor of Congress saying, let's bring back napalm, forget the Geneva Convention. And we know this. We, we know the double standard is so powerful that you choke on it when you think about it. You think, how could, how could this be? But this case of Jake Gardner in uh, Omaha, this one will stay with us for a while. You're not allowed to defend yourself, folks. Those of you who say, Buck, get out of New York City, get to a place, really? Nebraska's a red state, my friends. The state of Nebraska failed this man took away his God-given rights, and now he took away his own life. Just want to give a shout-out and a big thanks to uh, our newest affiliate to add the Buck Sexton Show, KNRS in Salt Lake City, a fantastic heritage radio station, and great that we'll be able to uh, grow Team Buck in Utah and out in the Salt Lake area. So really, really excited about this. Thank you so much for adding the Buck Sexton Show. And uh, the K- KNRS listeners out there, welcome to the fam, my friends. I'm, I'm hoping and I'm, I'm believing this will become your, your favorite new show, perhaps even your favorite radio show if I do my job right. Thank you so much. All right, now we get into Biden. What's going on with him these days? I, I told you I've been hearing these crazy rumors. I, I hear all this stuff about how Joe Biden is, you know, taking some kind of regimen to get him up and ready to do these events that the guy is so he's so tired. He's just so fatigued. He's guys, he's almost 80. We're going to be electing an almost 80 year old president. If it wasn't for the Trump derangement syndrome of the libs, they would all say this is absurd. The whole thing is absurd. And that's why it's almost getting boring, although I feel like we, we, we can't stop doing it, but it's, it's just become expected that he's going to say things now like this. Play 24. But they should be. It's estimated that 200 million people have died, probably by the time I finish this talk. But the complication of COVID-19, like lung scarring and heart damage, could become the next deniable pre-existing condition for over 6 million Americans. 200 million Americans will die from COVID by the time he finishes his speech, he says. Now, now that's the kind of thing where you, if you said that and you had any grasp on what the real numbers are and, and you were really with it, you would immediately correct yourself. Did you hear him immediately correct himself? So two out of three Americans could be dead of COVID by the time he finished his speech. The good news for all of us, I can tell you, is that uh, he turned out to be wrong on that one. Every day now, another thing that he says where he seems a little bit out of it. Every day now, another Biden moment that the media has to be the, clean, the cleanup crew for him. And they're completely willing to do it. They're, they're not going to stop. They're not going to slow this down at all. In fact, a- AOC is out there leading the charge for everyone telling them on the left, look, you know, this is this is do or die for Democrats. So you got to make sure Trump doesn't win so that our democracy can live another day. Play 12. I understand why people say I don't vote. What's the point? I I I really empathize with it. I'm not here to dismiss you. I'm not here to poo poo you. I'm not here to say you're wrong or that you're a bad person. What I'm here to say is that this year, this election, voting for someone, voting for Joe Biden is not about whether you agree with him. It's a vote to let our democracy live another day. That's what this is about. 
We need to act in solidarity and protection for the most vulnerable people in our society who have already experienced the violent repercussions of this administration. Why is it in solidarity to live another day? What exactly about Trump is destroying democracy? They, they say this stuff. I'm actually curious. Like, I, I, I want to know, because if somebody offered me money to come up, I mean, I, I could make some guesses, but how, how is the sitting president who won a Democrat, uh, democratically run election in 2016, uh, you know, free and fair democratic election then, winning another free and fair democratic election in 2020 a threat to democracy? Do they even have a, a pretend answer for any of this? Do they want to offer up anything at all? Or are they just going to say it? They just say this stuff, and we're all supposed to, uh, we're all supposed to go along with it? It's, it's madness, friends. Utterly madness. But no surprise there. And, and remember, they're, they're, having, uh, they're, they're not planning to accept the results of this election either. So while they're telling us about how a Trump victory would undermine our democracy, they're actively planning to undermine our democracy in the event of a Trump victory. You know, the same you see this, there's a pattern here, right? The same way that they will say it's it's undermining our norms if Trump fills the Supreme Court vacancy. And if Trump support uh, if Trump fills the Supreme Court vacancy. We will undermine norms as their threat, right? We'll, We'll pack the court. We'll do this stuff. And they're, they're even still pretending that uh, Stacey Abrams, the make-believe governor of Georgia, actually won her election. Here's Kamala Harris, play 14. People have to also sit back, black folks in particular, have to sit back and ask a question, which is why are so many people trying to make it so difficult for us to vote? Putting in place rules like what they've done in Georgia, because otherwise Stacey Abrams will be governor St- Stacey Abrams, right? Ah. Uh. That's one of their favorite things about the Stacey Abrams situation. They appeal to the base by telling this make-believe story that Stacey Abrams actually won an election that she lost. But they they won't relent on this. They won't give it up. They they won't stop pretending that Stacey Abrams won because they, they view this as a data point in their overall theory that Donald Trump is going to cheat in this election. And if he wins, they're going to say that he cheated. So what's going to happen, folks. That's the plan. Trust me. I'm seeing it right now. They will not accept it on election night. They will not accept a Trump win, no matter what they have to say or do. What's that going to do to the country? I, I wish I could even tell you. Just keep your shields high, friends. It's going gonna, it's gonna to get it's going to get spicy out there. I'll tell you, these hangers are great. Remember this, it's a friendly protest. Please remember, this is not a rally. You're not allowed to have political rallies of any kind. You're not allowed to go to church. You're not allowed to do anything. The only thing you're allowed to do is run wild through the streets, burn down storefronts, blow up stores and kill people because that's considered a protest. And that they allow you to have. You don't have to wear masks at protests. So I said, you know, we can't have a rally. The most we can have is 10 people. But why don't we just call it a protest? Because this is a protest. It's a protest against stupidity. Indeed it is. I like that the president holds the other side accountable for the nonsense and the double standards and the lies. So I just wanted to play that one for you. It it is. I I think a vote for Trump is actually a protest against stupidity. It's, It's a protest against lawlessness. It's a protest against disorder, uh, against anarchy against viciousness. So that's how I view a vote for Trump in this election cycle. Let's do roll call. It's time for roll call. Roll call, everybody. Facebook.com slash Buck Sexton. Team Buck at iHeartMedia.com. And uh, there you go. Let's get right to it. Uh, We got uh, Al coming up first here. Good show today. Had an LOL moment while driving when you played the clip of Nancy saying they were the party of law and order. We almost simultaneously said, yeah, right. Press on, brother. Um, yeah, Al, you know, Nancy Pelosi says we're the party of law and order. 
you know, I tell my servants all the time, let's keep it orderly in the garden when you're trimming the hedges. You know, she's Chardonnay Socialist Nancy really cares a lot about keeping the loonies in line. We all know that's a lie. But she's got to say what she's got to say now because we see the polls have turned on those libs, turned on those Democrats. It's making things rough for them. Oh, well, too bad. Stinks for them. Leland, first time listening to your show. Excellent. Where have you been? Well, Leland, I would ask you the same question. Where have you been? We would wish you had been the Freedom Hut all along, but welcome. A big welcome to you, and thank you so much for joining the team. You have my vote for president. I just turned 60 and seen enough to realize the direction our country's heading in. Uh, in fact, I, see this, I saw this coming more than 30 years ago. I was once that liberal who believed America was the evil machine. We're not perfect, but now I realize there's no other place in this world I'd rather live. Well, Leland, you are a very wise person, whether you're uh, 60 years young or whatever. doesn't matter. You're a very wise person. So you love this show and you understand what's going on with our country and with this republic and that this is our, our last great hope and lots of other important things to be said about that. Uh, but thank you. Welcome. I, I wish you had told us, though. Let us know how you found the show. That's one other thing, too. If you're new to the if you're new to Team Buck, please do let us know. Oh, and go to BuckSextonBook.com. I got my book there, The Socialism Survival Guide. Uh, you sign up and, and it's through Stansbury Research. You'll see. Just go to the site. It'll walk you through. You've got a copy of the book, BuckSextonBook.com. Uh, as for... Oh, gosh, I forgot what I was saying. Oh, yeah. If you're new to the team, please do let us know how you found out about us, because we want to make sure we're maximizing our ability to get the word out there about all things Team Buck. And uh, we, we also want producer Mark to have even more homework than he currently does. Right, Mark? Mark's got yes, a new nothing wife. I love more than homer, homework. This, you know, he's got a new wife. There's he, he doesn't need sports or time with the wife or anything. He just wants to do more homework for the show. So, oh, yeah, I would prefer to work 24 seven. I don't even want to sleep. Yeah, I know. But, you know, unfortunately, guys, sometimes, sometimes he's got to actually get rest, eat food, things like that. Jim, Shields High, I want to drop you some praise for one of your key sponsors, Pure Talk USA. I'm only using the $20 plan because my Moto Z doesn't enable me to use the hotspot, but tech support was honest, told me this might happen. Tech support with Pure Talk USA is almost as great. As a three-hour Buck Sexton show, Ron, on the iHeartRadio Endless Loop. Everybody who listens should try it. They'll never look back at their old carrier again. Jim, thanks so much for the shout-out for Pure Talk. Look, we have, Pure Talk is one of them. We have great sponsors on this show with excellent products, really well-priced, very convenient, top customer service. You know, we, uh, we, we, only, we only work with companies that we're really proud to work with. That's one of the promises of the show. I mean, I'll, I, I, I'll not say what it is because, I, you know, whatever you had a relationship. But I remember years ago, we had a sponsor. We tried them out. I got some I got some complaints from some members of Team Buck that they didn't really like the product and they didn't really feel like it was. And I, I told uh, I told our team, I said, guys, we're not uh, our sales team. I said, we're not going to keep working with them. You know, that's they can that, that we can't have that. You know what I mean? And well, look, it wasn't it was a. Uh, Let's just say that people felt like one of the, this was this was now going back many years, but they felt like one of the uh, products was not meeting their expectations. Anyway, I'm just saying we only work with companies that we are really proud of and that we know give great products to our audience. And uh, that's that's our that's our promise to all of you. Uh, Terrence Shields High Buck with the passing of RGB uh, or RBG. It's RBG, not RGB, but close enough, Terrence. Contrary to Cocaine Mitch's initiative, Trump should go all in and say he will not nominate a successor unless reelected. This will do two things. It will energize not only his base, but all the rights at uh, Supreme Court protectionists that held their noses and voted from the first election. Secondly, it will once and for all take the wind out of the left's he's a tyrant tirade completely out of their sails. The left is expecting a ramrod approach, and Mitch has all but confirmed that strategy. I say it's time to do the unexpected and put them on their heels. I'm interested in your take on this strategy. Terrence, I like that you're thinking outside the box, but I think it would be better to stay inside the box on this one. And here's why. I understand what you're saying. You think that it will motivate people to come out and vote for Trump a lot if he says he's waiting until uh, after the election. But a lot of people would take that as an abdication, right, that, that he has 
promised to do this when he can do it. And a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. By the way, Snow Princess yesterday had a, this is a total di- di- digression, but I was walking with her on the street, and a bird flew into her hand, basically. I mean, it flew right in front of her, and then it hopped into her hand when she bent down. And my dad, who's a, a, a bird, you know, an amateur bird expert, said it's a female scarlet tanager. And I actually have a photo of it hang, sitting in her hand. It's a little, it's a, and it turns out it's a little songbird, and it looked like maybe it was having a little bit of trouble with one of its wings, but it, it uh, yeah, it flew into Snow Princess's hand. It was pretty amazing. I got photos of it. Uh, so bird in the hand, two in the bush. That's why I was thinking about that. As for Supreme Court justices, y- you can't play games with this. This is somebody who's going to sit on the bench for 30, 30 years, maybe. Uh, so this is not the time to get cute. And Terrence, anyone who's going to vote for Trump because of this pick is going to vote for Trump uh, anyway. So I don't think you really increase base turnout by saying you're going to wait. In fact, people might take that as being wimpy and trying to get out of getting it done. So I, I appreciate your thinking on this, Terrence, and I know you're trying to be contrarian from the status quo, but I think... I'm, I feel very strongly it's uh, we, we should have named we should have named this person or Trump should have named the Supreme Court pick today and McConnell should schedule a vote forthwith. All we do by delaying is let them come up with more strategies and, and plot more shenanigans and have the media tell more lies. There is no benefit to waiting. None. Zero. In my mind. And we should go full court press. And, and I have I mean, I, I think people need to understand this, too. I'm among those who, in a sense, was radicalized by the Kavanaugh hearings. I mean, the Kavanaugh hearing was a change in my political thinking where where it went from we need to fight hard to defeat this side to we need to do whatever is necessary and within our within our scope of morality to beat this side. Like we, we need to be willing to view this as a steel cage match. This is not time for delicacies and niceties. And I I think the Kavanaugh hearing really proved that to a lot of us, that if you allow these Democrats to do what they're going to do, they will they will ruin a man in front of his family. They'll ruin his reputation. They'll psychologically torture and destroy him. They will mutilate his character for the amusement of psychotic libs and people who are desperate to have their pick on the Supreme Court. As if it's some part of their own personal identity. It, it's, it's appalling, but this is, really, this is really where it all is. So we will have to continue to watch this very closely. That, that much is for sure. More roll call. Abe. Buck, graduating in the mid-90s. I couldn't agree with you more about the movie Braveheart being one of the best. Well, thank you so much. Braveheart is one of the greatest movies of all time. I think it is the, it's my favorite. I won't say it's the greatest movie. It's my favorite movie. It's my favorite movie. Producer Mark, I respect you much, but disagree about the Beatles being dubbed as one of the greatest rock bands ever. No doubt they did have great success as a band. However, at the time, I believe Judas, uh, I believe Zeppelin and Judas Priest better qualify as rock. Producer Mark, do you have a response? I think ro- the definition of rock is a, a wide ranging nowadays. Have you seen the people get that get nominated to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Uh, I think you're right, but I'm just wondering who do you have in mind for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? That's a wide. I mean, I don't know if the top of what didn't Kiss get put in. I know there was a big debate over that. Um, that's rock and roll, isn't it? That's where the Beastie Boys are in there. That can the argument can be hmm. made. That's not rock and roll. Is the Beastie Boys rock and roll? I mean, they were rappers, but they also had a very heavy rock background to their tracks. So. I mean, I suppose Kid Rock is rock and roll because there is rock, in fact, in the name. Uh, I mean, he's more country, but there's, I believe there's country artists in there now. So I, I think the, the term rock, it should really be called the Music Hall of Fame if we're really getting technical. But, I mean, come on. I don't know why all the Beatles hate on this show. Hmm. It's mostly from you. Well, yeah, I mean, if you listen to the White Album and you tell me that there aren't a bunch of songs in there that suck and make you want to rip out your own eardrums, I mean, you're just not telling me the truth, so that's why. Okay. I, I mean, you are just yeah, I know. ridiculous. I know. I keep it real. Sometimes I think you're anti-American. 
I, I do Ooh. like soccer and uh, and live in Manhattan, so there's some there's definitely uh, some stuff. Yeah, I know it's some real commie stuff about me. Alice Buck, I went on a horseback tour yesterday. There were two couples from out of state, plus my daughter and me, Vermonters. Everyone other than us was masked up for the pre ride. Then the Mass- Massachusetts and New Hampshire folks opined on why Vermont is the best with COVID because we follow the rules. Ugh, I want to laugh, but I explained it's our lifestyle. They tried to tell us it'd be worse when we are shut in in the winter. I gave up and joked about my drafty ancient farmhouse. I really think this has to end. Riding a horse in the woods in a mask? Yes, one man actually did that. People have gone nuts. Alice, I agree. People have gone nuts. I don't know what else to say. I mean, in my building, if you if you walk even outside of the building in the open air without a mask on right now, people give you really dirty looks and they get like really upset about this. And look at them like, just, you know, don't make out with me. I don't well, What is your problem? Like, you're not going to, you know, I'm not sick. The whole the whole thing is just it's just absurd. And notice how at every stage it's like it's been engineered for maximum control over all of us, right? At every stage, it's, oh, you know, we think that there's a huge number of asymptomatic people out there. Oh, asymptomatic people are just as infective or just as infectious as, uh, you know, some people with really bad symptoms. It's just somehow we're, we're, if we don't just start saying enough is enough, we're just going to be on this, in this little tyranny of idiocy forever. But I, I think a lot of people like it. They like it. Brett writes, Buck, I just saw you on Fox. Do you and Tucker have the same barber? If you were to shave or Tucker to grow a beard, I'm not sure we could tell you apart. Well, Brett, you're not the only one who's ever confused me with Tuck, especially back in the day when I didn't have a beard. Uh, We don't have the same barber. We have similar hair. Mine, perhaps a little thicker and more luxurious. But we do have a a similar look. I think we probably have the same uh, ethnic, uh, you know, mix of Irish, English, and Scottish in our backgrounds and, and the whole thing. So yeah, I, I, I agree. Um, but yeah, I, I was thinking about shaving, but, uh, I don't know. Snow princess says the beard is, I don't know. I, I the, the, the ladies are always pro beard. I've, I've had very few of the team buck ladies or just ladies in life in general that I know who, you know, I, I think there was one since I've had a beard. I had one female friend who was like, why are you hiding your face under that? And then everyone else was pro beard. All the ladies, at least the guys like to make fun of the beard because I'm young looking and it's patchy and all the rest of it. But uh, guys, I got news for you. I don't care what you think. <laughs> your, your opinions on the matter. Unimportant to me. Unimportant to me. My opinion matters and I'm not changing all the logos again. So you're keeping the beard. There you go. Kyle writes, Buck, you don't seem like the Harry Potter type, but I'm well-versed because my wife is a huge fan. Anyways, the ways the libs are acting with RBG passing away is about the same as Voldemort would when one of his horcruxes, which is a piece of his soul imprinted on an inanimate object to protect him from death, was destroyed. Any perceived challenge to Roe versus Wade is a threat to destroying a piece of their soul. A sick thing to latch one's identity to, but that's why Voldemort and the Libs are the bad guys, I guess. Um, I, 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 don't, I haven't read the Harry Potter book. Bruce Mark, you have, right? Yes. Uh, well, basically, whenever uh, Harry or somebody destroys a Horcrux, uh, Voldemort like kind of it looks like he's dying, like he acts like he's in pain, kind of like that, like a piece of his soul died. Oh, okay. Yeah. I get you. All right. Um, David, hey, Buck. I recently had to take a hiatus from politics, but I'm back now and just listening to you. My question is, do you think the Middle East peace deals could end if the libs get control of Washington? Just want to know your thoughts on that. Shields high, brother. Uh, David, I don't think so, because these deals, there's no reason for them not to be signed. I mean, there's no there's no there's no downside from our perspective. So I don't really see that as as being a, a real concern. But, you know, with libs, you never really, you know, they, they might just undo things to undo stuff that Trump did out of spite. And that may include at some level these uh, these international negotiations that are going on. I'm just waiting for lib media. If the Saudis do have a formal uh, diplomatic recognition of Israel, which would be a seismic event in the Middle East. I'm just waiting for the libs to say that, oh, well, that's not a big deal. They'll say anything just like they will about the Supreme Court fight right now. Friends. Please spread the word about the show. Pass the buck. Tell people far and wide to listen, especially as we're in the 
the real height of this election season. We're going to need each other, Freds, because it's going to be quite a fight ahead of us. So get your rest. Shields high.